Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with actually a video that was made upon request to show the installation and the replacement of a stock Tegan or even a Henlong gearbox and replacing it with an aftermarket unit. Like I said before, this video was made upon request by one of my subscribers and by the way, if you are not a current subscriber to the channel, I strongly recommend hitting the subscribe button by doing this, this is the best way to keep in the loop with current ECA builds and projects, as well as also being able to catch up with the older vehicles and builds that I've posted on my channel in the past. Now, for this tutorial, I'll be utilizing this plastic edition, Tegan Late Production German Tiger 1. This model here is currently undergoing its rebuilding and its redetailing process, and more information on all of that will be discussed in a separate video set which will be a model showcase video of this particular build here. For this video, however, I'm just going to be focusing on the tutorial on swapping out the gearbox. Now, even though the Plastic Edition Tagans feature a plastic running gear, they also feature a metal gearbox. Now, the type of metal that's used on these gears are zinc alloy. These type of cast zinc gears are commonly used on these ready-to-run radio controlled 116 scale models and in addition to being found on these models here from Tegan a similar gearbox is also found on the Henlong metal upgraded versions of their tanks in which you're actually paying a little bit extra for these type of components now to the novice or someone who is really just stumbling into these ready to run models for the first time the metal gears seem like on face value to be a very good feature and are definitely something that may push someone to purchase the metal upgraded version compared to the standard edition as plastic gears do have this stigma of being lower end and poorer quality and metal is by definition being more superior and the way to go however this is actually something of dubious value and I'm gonna go over in a second to why these gearboxes are really not as good as they advertise to be the problem with these gearboxes is that the zinc alloy that these components are comprised of are not strong enough to keep up with the wear and tear of the tanks running these gearboxes have a glass jaw and will break in a very short period of time. I've seen these gearboxes wear out on standard flat terrain like a tile floor for instance and I also have actual footage of one of these gearboxes breaking down on a tank in operation driving in the lawn. Now in terms of mileage I estimate that you get about two hours of non-stop running from one of these glass jaw gearboxes before you suffer a malfunction. This is compounded if you actually upgrade the track with the metal sprockets in addition to these gearboxes that will add more wear and tear to the system causing it to wear down in a much faster rate now on the Tegan tanks with the plastic components this is not as much of a problem but this is definitely something to keep in mind for the metal upgraded hand long units because they give you the metal track along with the zinc gearbox now, it's at this time to point out that this model here, from my understanding, is actually an older produced unit, and because of the issues with these zinc alloy gears, Tegan no longer produces them in this manner, and the gears found on the newer renditions are made from a steel alloy. Also, the metal editions made from Tegan feature a nice high-end gearbox, which is actually the same type of gearbox I'm going to be mounting inside of this model here. This is important to point out because even though the newer editions of these Tigers and models from Tegan feature the improved gearbox, there is still a large number of these zinc alloy gear units that are still floating around the market, and it's not uncommon to acquire one in this manner. It's a simple way to determine whether or whether or not you have a zinc alloy gearbox. The simplest and easiest way to determine whether or whether or not you have a zinc alloy gearbox is by, well, taking a magnet, which I have here attached to my screwdriver, and seeing if they stick to the gears. If they stick to the case like they did here, but not the gears, obviously you do not have a steel gearbox. 
Now to replace the gearbox and swap it out, this is a very simple procedure to do. And for this unit, I'll be utilizing a set of replacement gearboxes from Tegan. These are the Premium Series 3, which utilize not only steel gears, but also have ball bearings for the points where the shafts make contact with the frame. On the stock units, in lieu of ball bearings, they have brass bushings that are used for this purpose. Now, on the units, from what I understand, that have the steel gears that are supplied with the plastic additions, the ball bearings are not present, and they utilize the bushings like this unit here. But again, this, the gears are not made from the zinc ones like I have on this old worn-out unit. I have used this unit before, and this unit will work on not only Tegan models, but Hen Long tanks as well. Now, Henlong also has a replacement steel gearbox as well. Their unit is, I believe, called the Ultimate Edition, or something similar along those lines. They have a red case and have blue motors attached to them. Now, there are several options available for gear ratios. Something like this would be better discussed by talking to IMAX Direct. There's a guy by the name of Eric who handles all of the Tegan models and all their components and he will be able to steer you in a better direction than I can here in terms of ratios. Now, the compared to the Henlong gearbox, the Tegan one, in my opinion, is a better quality unit. The Henlong one is good enough but does require a modification made to some of the final drive gears. More information on that is discussed in the videos where I go over the Henlong gearbox. For this particular video though, however, I'm just going to go with the installation of this unit on this model. Now, opening up the unit, we have here the gearboxes, and this is how exactly how they're shipped. This, the gears, of course, are all steel. And the unit has the ball bearings like I was alluding to earlier. These gearboxes have a very nice roll to them. And once added, the tank's performance will definitely increase. Utilizing the magnet, you can see that the advertising is true and the gears are indeed steel. Now these are a direct drop-in replacement for the stock units. And you can notice that they are already ready to go with the electrical. No soldering is required. It's all plug and play. And they just drop right in. To, the way to install these is via some fasteners, which I'll go over in a second. Now, with the set from Tegan, you get both left and right hand gearboxes. And you also get a bag with a set of fasteners for mounting on the tank sprockets. What are not included are the actual fasteners which connect the gearboxes to the tank. For this you will be re you'll be recycling the original fasteners that are found on the model. Now for prep work before you can actually do the replacement procedure, you're going to have to take the tank apart. Of course, the entire top half gets removed. It is removable on the taking tanks via a latch. And from here, you also need to take off the sprocket and the track. Now, because this model is going through its rebuild, I went ahead and removed the sprocket and the running gear just prior to the filming of this scene. Here I have the original sprocket, which is plastic. Now, on the model, the hubcap here is removable, and this is important because this is how you get access to the center fastener. The fastener itself is a metric, I believe, M4 fastener. It has a lock washer already on it. And with an Allen wrench, you simply undo the threads and the entire sprocket pops off. Once the sprocket is removed, it's then time to get access to removing the gearbox. Now, like I said before, the units are attached to the tank's body via fasteners. There are two Phillips fasteners per gearbox, four in total. This is important to keep in mind because, like I said before, you are not offered any spares with the set, so you want to keep track of these units and you don't want to lose them. Now, this particular version here of the Tegan Tiger 1 does have a reinforcement strap pre-installed. I don't believe this is going to be in the way of the gearbox removal. However, this is the first time doing this conversion with this unit present. As the Tegan examples I've built in the past, this unit just wasn't there. I believe this is a newer 
feature found on several of the newer units that have come out in recent years. However, I'm beginning to digress, and let's go ahead and start removing the gearbox. To remove the gearbox, you want to find where the fasteners are, and then just go in there and unscrew them out. I'm utilizing a long Phillips screwdriver for this procedure, just so that it makes clearance with the gears. Once the fastener has been loosened, you want to take it out with a long set of needle nose pliers. And I like to put them in a little cup just to prevent them from getting lost. Now, of course, the long set of pliers is not required, but is definitely something that I like to do when I do these type of conversions. You can use a magnet tipped screwdriver for the same type of procedure, but I have had some mixed results with them in the past, simply because when the screwdriver is going in, because of the magnetic tip, you're going to want to snap to the motor or even to the gearbox, and it just makes the installation removal just a little bit more problematic. It can still be done, of course, but it is one of those things to watch out for. Now, once the second fastener is removed, the gearbox is totally free and is just held in place by the second unit. Of course, these two fasteners are next to be removed. Now also on this model here, you can see I have the volume control switch mounted directly over the driver's side. I'm going to unscrew this unit as well at this time, just because it will give me clearance and it will be one less obstacle in the way when it comes time for sliding out the gearbox. Set that aside. Okay, and from here the gearboxes can be extracted. Now after trying to finagle and wiggle the gearboxes out of place, I quickly came to the conclusion that the bar does indeed need to be removed. Now this is very simply done. It's held on with an M3 fastener and a nut, and with a socket driver of the same size and a Phillips head screwdriver, I can remove the unit. Just a few turns and the fastener comes off. And I'm not even going to undo the other unit, I can just swing it out of the way. With the unit out of the way, I can now extract the gearboxes. Now if you notice at this point here, I didn't unplug the motors from their sockets on the motherboard. The reason for that is that I always do this just before I swap out the unit with the replacement. The advantage about doing this is that this prevents any sort of mix-up and confusion on which plug goes to which socket on the motherboard. Once the units are, the wires are untangled, I can then go ahead and just swap out each gearbox with their correct corresponding plug. So this unit is here. Like I said before, it's just plug and play. And then just repeat the same step with the gearbox from the opposite side. Once the units are plugged in, it is then time to reinstall the fasteners that I set aside from before. With the fastener on the end of my plier, I'm going to now realign it into the hole. However, one addition I'm going to make is a little drop of Loctite. This is not something that you have to do, but is a feature I like to do on my builds in that it just keeps the gearboxes in a nice, strong manner and any vibrations and torque from the tracks during operation, the Loctite will prevent the faster from possibly wiggling loose. Now I just line everything up, 
and get everything back in proper order. You utilize the exact same screw locations that were present on the original gearbox. When it comes to the tightening, you don't want to over torque it just enough so that the piece bottoms out and is nice and secured in place. Over torquing can definitely cause some problems and it's something you want to avoid. After the last fastener is mounted, the gearboxes are now completely installed, and then it's time to remount on the support brace. Now, just like on the other parts, I'm gonna add a little bit of Loctite. Once added, the installation is all set. Now the motors do give you ample amount of wiring to reach the motherboard, which is a good trait. However, once they are fully unspooled, like you see here, they do add a lot to clutter. With some zip ties, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this area up, making it a lot more representable. Once the wires for the motors are all cleaned up, I then went ahead and remounted the volume control circuit board to the original location. The next thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of grease to the gears just for the extra help in lubrication. This is another little trick that I do to my build. Don't want to put too much grease on, just a glob on some of the surfaces here and there. After the gearbox makes a few revolutions, the gears will have a thorough coat of the lubricant added. The application is done with a screwdriver. A toothpick can also be used as well. The same thing will also be done to the other side. Now I've also had a few questions on the type of lubricants to use, i.e. oil versus grease. Oil will obviously lubricate the gears very well, however it does have some problems to it. First is after a while, the oil would eventually dry off and you will then be left with a bare gearbox that needs to be relubed. Other issues that oil potentially has is it has more of a tendency to fling outward during operation, which can cause a bit of a mess on the inside of the model. Grease, on the other hand, will always stay in place and doesn't evaporate. And if you put just enough grease on the gears, the fling up feature is not really one that's going to be too problematic. There will be some material, of course, that gets exerted from the gears while they're spinning, but it's a lot less compared to oil, in my experience. The last component to mount on is, of course, that of the sprocket. Now, here I have the plastic sprockets. You can remount the plastic sprocket and the plastic track back on the model, and will run with the metal gearbox perfectly fine. However, on this model here, of course, I'm going to be swapping these out for the metal units, and more information on that is talked about in the actual model showcase video for this vehicle that I have here. To mount the unit on, the sprocket has a semicircular tongue and groove type setup. It matches onto the spindle and you line up the sprocket until it finds that sweet spot to which it'll lock on. Then with the fastener with the lock washer attached, you would thread the unit on until the threads bottom out.
and then once bottomed out, the unit is fully installed. A drop of Loctite can also be added to the threads to keep everything in place. This is another step I like to do on my builds as well. Now, if you're utilizing the plastic track or the track that's already pre-pinned, while you're sliding on the sprocket, you could have the track partially timed and the whole unit could be installed in one segment. Then you just go ahead and go through the fastener mounting procedure, like I said before. However, on this build, that's not going to be done until a later portion as it's still going through its build and redetailing process. And this is one of the last components that got fitted to the model just before completion. And with that, that wraps up this replacement gearbox tutorial video. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to this channel where you can get updates on new model showcase and project update videos when they get posted. Another way to keep in the loop of new posted content is by liking us on Facebook. There I have more pics of this particular build as well as other smaller and larger scale builds that have been posted on the channel in the past. Furthermore, don't forget to swing by eastcoastarmory.com where there are more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Thanks for watching.